Hi guys, it's Ray with Ray's Turquoise Turtle. Um, I'm going to do these two trays today. Just getting a pair of gloves on. I have a resin mixed up for one already, and I have one already um, gilded with the flakes. So I'm going to do this in two separate steps just to explain it. But I want to get this resin used before it sets up on me. So this one I used these gold flakes. I will put the links to everything on Amazon in the description. Uh, I'm going to use avocado mica powder because I think the dark green will look pretty against the gold when this is done. I mixed up uh, 240 milliliters of resin. I want to because um, I think it's going to be a little bit much I think I only need about 200. So I'm actually just going to dump off a little bit into a cup. I can put this in something else. So, and I actually have a mold that I just poured that's not quite filled, so I can use it on that. Normally I would put my mica in my cup before the resin, but because I'm mixing directly in, I'm going to break that rule. And this is quite a bit of resin, so I'm going to use a little bit more mica than I normally would to start. And I'm going to stir this super slow to begin with, because the micas can, like, poop up everywhere if you're not careful. And if I feel like the mica is not going to give me quite enough coverage, I will put a couple dots of alcohol ink in. But I'm hoping to only use mica. This is a gorgeous dark green. I think this is going to look great with the gold flakes. So I'm going to move this tray out of the way a minute, so hopefully I don't get any of this on it. So, because this resin is getting really warm. This is really pretty shimmery. So. I'm going to pour this, then I'll explain what I was doing over there, and then I'll come back in and fill. Or I'll explain this part, and then I'll come back in and fill the other one. So. I still have a little unmixed micas, but I think it'll be okay. It's one of the things I like about micas is the swirly effect you get. And by not doing these at the same exact time, It'll be better. I won't waste as much of the next if this is way over the 200. But I suspect it won't be too far over. So, um, kind of getting down to eye level here. That actually looks pretty good. I have under 30 mLs left in here, so. Probably 175 would have done it, plus my additive. I don't like to apply any kind of heat to my silicone molds because I don't like risking tearing them. I've done it before and it's not fun, especially when it's your first time use. So I'm going to use a mini mister and spritz it. And that will take the bubbles off the top. It's kind of reacting with the mica a little bit but it should be fine. So I'm going to scooch this one over. I'm going to take off my glove because I do have resin on it and I don't want that to get on anything else. So when I do the next one, I will pour off some more before I mix it. I'm just going to go ahead and use this and quick fill up these little turtle molds I have. I'm sure you've seen me use them before, but I don't actually currently have any spare turtles hanging out. Um, my daughter and I used them on a project the other day, the last couple I had, so I'm okay with starting another round. That one I overfilled a little bit, but it really won't matter. There. 
Now there's very little left over, so I'm going to move them out of the way. They don't need to be right here. And I can scoot the... When I unmold them, I can peel the rust off. I usually embed them in other resin, so as long as the top is good, you can't really tell anything. Put the top back on that. This is going to keep blowing bubbles. So this one I did half on that side. I almost think on this one, it did drip a little bit in here, so I'm just wiping that out. I think on this one I want to do like a center strip or around the center of the tray. I'm not really sure. But you open up your flakes. These are tightly compacted. So I work with a pair of tweezers. Um, I mean, this is like four sheets right here. So. I'm just going to start laying them out. Kind of getting an idea of how far I want to go. These jars that I got go a very, very long way. I've actually had these for almost two years now. So, that's actually two pieces. I just can't quite get them separated yet. There we go. And I do want some along the sides, so do be conscious of doing your edges. And you can do as much or as little as you want here. I like these copper ones. They're almost like a rose gold and a copper. So they just make a very soft, pretty project. And they will start to burnish themselves to your hand. I do typically prefer to wear gloves to do this part, but I'm not. I prefer to wear gloves for a couple reasons. Um, so I don't foil my hands, and so I'm not transferring any oils from my hands to the project because I don't want any risk of my epoxy repelling. But. So, once you have it started, you just rub them down to the mold. And they'll hold themselves to the mold. Just kind of burnish them down a little bit. By your hand, a tool, whatever. And this mold is nice to work with because it kind of opens up wide to let you get in here. the extra if it's overlapped won't really hurt anything but it will kind of rub off so this is the slow tedious part of this whole project hopefully my resin isn't setting up over here where it was sitting half mixed
So decide how much of your color you want to show through. In this case, these colors are going to be fairly similar when they're done. So it's going to be a soft difference, which is kind of what I'm going for in this case. there so I have none down in here this is why I didn't do both of these right now because like I said this part is kind of tedious and boring But if you've gotten giant jars of these flakes and you kind of don't know what to do with them, this just gives you another idea other than mixing them into the resin as is. So I'm going to go with that's enough. I'm okay with it being a little random. I'm put the lid on that so they don't go flying everywhere. I'm going to bring my resin back in. I had it not quite mixed when I set it down. I just put it in front of the heater so it could warm a little bit more. So again, I mixed up 240 or 8 ounces. So if I want 175, I'm going to have to pour off about another 60 ounces. Or, yeah, 60 mLs, excuse me. 60 ounces. So, I'm about ready to spritz this first tray again. Just want to double check. Make sure this is fully mixed. I can still see a couple little swirlies through the side, the bottom. Just one thing I like about these super clear mixing cups, I don't like that they're disposable. Um, I have successfully picked the resin out of a couple, but they really are made to be disposable. Okay. You can tell by the way that's flowing that it is nice and mixed. Just gonna wipe my stick one more time. All right, so I'm gonna pour off about 60 mLs so I don't waste it by coloring it this color. So tiny bit more. All right, that's about 170, so that's good. Let me get those out of the way. And I'm going to use Pearl this time. Like I said, it's going to be just slightly different than the actual... Oh, I do want to take this out before I mix in it. Try and keep these nice. I should have put gloves back on, yes. I just got resin on my hand, but I will wipe it off in a moment. I haven't had any effects from this resin yet, so this brand. So I am just going to mix my mica like last time. Because this is a fairly deep cup, I do want to pay attention to the bottom when I'm mixing. 
make sure I'm getting to the bottom. I feel like micas, when you mix by hand like this, never quite fully, fully mix. Especially when they're super shimmery ones like this. But I don't mind that little striation and variation in color. So, to me, that doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to go ahead and I kind of chased the edge like that. Um to try and make sure it could get down into the nooks and crannies. And I'm just going to fill it up. And my measurement should be just about perfect this time. I shouldn't breach any edges. So, that's that. I'm going to go ahead and give them both a spritz if I can figure out where I put my little mister, which I now have two going because I lost my first one this morning and then found that one again. So, I will keep an eye on both of these for a few minutes. Mist them again if necessary. But, um... You can see bubbles coming up. That's going to continue to happen for a little bit. And I do want to get this tray moved because there is a bubble of dried resin underneath it, which is keeping it tipped a little bit. So I'm going to move it to my other table, which is a little bit flatter to cure. Or <laughs> it's not a little bit flatter. My other table is actually leveled for my turners where this one is my um, just work table. So it's not as well leveled. So... I will come back in tomorrow and I will unmold these and show you what we have. Okay, these are ready to come out of the molds, so let's just do that quick. There we go. Simple. Love the green and the gold together. Pretty pleased with this one. And the rose goldy copper one. This is smooth. But that is it. It looks brighter on the camera than it really is. It really is pretty. So, two more little molds. These molds, these trays are. Seven by mm, about three and a quarter for anyone who is wondering. So that's them.